Hi, uh, I'm Richard Harris. I am uh, the data scientist at Braintree Payments. Um, the only one, it's really lonely, but it's also kind of cool. Um, I have a website, I have a GitHub. Uh, this is using Jupyter to cluster Netrunner decks. Uh, this is a project I am currently working on for my own personal website because I thought it would be cool to make my own website. If you're a data scientist, you should try it. It's really illuminating because it's really, really difficult and annoying. Uh, so ideally, I was hoping I would come up here with a bunch of uh, content on the website. There's not a lot of content on there yet because it's really difficult, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it. But I used uh, Jupyter Notebooks to help me create the content for it, and I'm just going to kind of talk through what Neverner is, what the kind of content I was trying to make is, and then just do a little demo of how I used Jupyter Notebooks to make that happen. Um, so that's exactly what the outline is going to be. Uh, kind of going through what is Netrunner down to how you visualize the data science you're doing within these notebooks. Uh, so what is it? Uh, so Android Netrunner is this uh, living card game. It's kind of like magic, but it's a lot cooler. Um, you basically have a hacker and a corporation. Two people play this game. And it's got this really cool asymmetrical rule set where one person is trying to hack into these servers and steal these secrets and use those to get points. And the other is trying to fend off those attacks and score out these points. Uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, so you have two players. Uh, both players have a certain number of actions they can take a turn, uh, three or four. Uh, they both win by scoring seven points at the end of the game. And they both spend, they both earn money, they spend this money to install and use these cards that help move their board state along towards some victory one way or another. Uh, the corporation side has these agendas they want to score. So these are kind of like nefarious plans. One of the, uh, the most popular card is you write your, uh, your advertising on the moon. And it's really, really cool because everyone like, looks at the moon and sees your thing and it's worth two points, it's great. Uh, so they create these servers, they have uh, ice, which are kind of these server defenses, upgrades, traps that go into them, and these are all designed to keep these hackers out. Uh, the really cool part is corporations have this hidden information. They put things face down, you don't know what's behind it. It could be a trap, it could be something really, really useful. The runner player is building money, installing these programs to get through those defenses, and is trying to go and steal the cards out of the corporation's hand, or the deck, or the board before they can actually get to them. So it's kind of really cool. It's this uh, asymmetrical sort of combat between two players. Uh, the reason this is interesting from a data perspective is that there are these, all these little different constraints on deck building that make this really fun. Uh, so you can have three copies of a single card in your deck. Uh, you have a minimum deck size. This is usually 40 to 50 cards. Uh, so you can't just have 20 cards and call it a day. Uh, and every deck has an ID. And this ID gives it a specific bonus that they get to use. Uh, there's an influence system. So each side has kind of a set of factions they can choose their cards from, but your ID kind of belongs to a certain faction. Those cards are free. Outside of that, uh, they have to kind of spend these points that they have, and they have a certain number of points to pull cards in from other sides. So different decks have different patterns that they follow. Uh, you can borrow them from out of faction. And so why is this really interesting? So it's constrained. So it's constrained by the number of cards, it's constrained by the ID choice, uh, it's constrained by which cards you pull in from out of faction, you can't pull them all in. Uh, it's creative, uh, it's a small card pool right now, it's about 700 different types of cards. Uh, so you tend to kind of have a few limited number of choices which really leads to some kind of creative, do I put two cards in here, do I put three cards, do I put two cards in this other card that does something similar? Uh, neither the ID nor the faction you put in there is deterministic, so you have you know, okay, I have 15 points, I can spend them however I want to spend them. Uh, and because it's a really geeky card game, there's a lot more accessible data out there. Uh, there is a website called NetrunnerDB that is fan-made and has an API and over 20,000 decks that, cost, that people have put up there, which is great because I can just sit in Python and go and scrape three years worth of data with no problem. Uh, there is online play that publishes quarterly statistics about what decks are coming up and how well they're doing, uh, and honestly, I'm a data scientist and I would like to win this game sometimes, so why not leverage data to do it? Um, okay, so anyway, so the main point is really Jupyter Notebooks helped me go from this, uh, which is, you know, here's some columns, here's some stuff, to what I've actually made so far, which I think looks kind of cool. Uh, you, you may disagree and you probably would, but uh, so anyway, so data science and Jupyter Notebooks, uh, basically we're downloading data from this website and kind of doing some basic cleaning. I'm going to do kind of just a quick run through of what I've done so far. So we're starting at this point, which is take that data, transform it for clustering, uh, assign them two clusters, visualize these clusters, and then make a better visualization, which I kind of don't go into too much, but that's kind of later step things. 
Uh, and then the great part is we can kind of iterate through this and discover. Anybody who's doing kind of clustering algorithms will tell you, is it five clusters, is it six, is it eight, is it 10? I don't have to worry about that. I can just kind of go through it over and over again until I find the right one. So I'm gonna load this up. Uh, I'll try to make that big. Is that big enough for people? Oh, it's big enough. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll just start by uh, importing kind of libraries, um, you know, pandas, uh, some sklearn stuff, matplotlib, do it inline. Uh, I have a CSV that's on here, and we can kind of look what that looks like. And basically, it's a long form data frame. Uh, each deck has a deck ID. Each one has a certain card and a number of quantities of that card that are in there. So in this case, the, the Darwin card has two cards in this deck. Uh, we can kind of describe what that data looks like. And yeah, the deck ID is absolutely meaningless here as a numeric variable, but we can kind of see like, on average, 2.2 cards per deck of, of a given card, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so we can kind of look at what these value counts look like. Some cards come up a lot. Some cards are in uh, 1,100 decks. Some of them are only show up once. Uh, we can even kind of go through and look at by card, how many of these cards are there. So this kind of access to global set card, there's eight of them throughout these about 1,200 decks. So not a very popular card. But it's kind of ugly. So let's use uh, Chris Moffitt's tips for customizing your IPython and Pandas display and just change the CSS. So here we're kind of changing what the font frame is, uh, what these tables look like, and we can import the HTML uh, function out of the IPython core. It's not gonna show anything. But now all of a sudden, our tables look a lot cooler. Uh, that's just kind of a quick little side note. Uh, I like pretty things. So OK, so we're going to transform the data a little bit. I'm going to make some kind of more sane pandas defaults. This will help this stuff show on the screen uh, without having to scroll through things. Uh, and so basically, we're going to get 10 rows, and we're going to have a max of 10 columns on the screen. So OK, so we're going to transform some of this data. Uh, we know the data looks like, kind of like this right now. I'd rather have it uh, for every column I want to have a card name. Uh, so we can kind of do that by using this uh, group by and unstack functionality in Pandas. So we'll just kind of do that, and we end up with something that looks like this. So every card has its um, column, every deck is one row, and we have the number of cards that they have, zero through three. So we're gonna transform it using a term frequency inverse document frequency. Uh, this is basically saying, let's take how often this occurs in a single deck, transform it by how often it occurs over all the decks, and this will tell us kind of like what's more unique and what's not. Uh, and so generally, a lot of decks that don't have the cards are gonna have zeros. Here's one that ends up having a kind of very unique card down there. Uh, we've also turned this into an array so we can send it into SkyKit-Learn, uh, but we can also go through and turn it into a data frame just to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, and I'll even do that now. Yeah. And so basically, like, you can put it back into a data frame if you want to. Uh, it's going to give you basically float values from zero to some other higher number. Uh, so let's compare a couple of cards that we see in decks a lot versus in decks not so much. So this is a, deck, this is a card called Parasite. It's really cool. You put it onto, uh, onto some defenses, and it just chomps away at it until it trashes it. That's really cool. Um, we have another card that's kind of very similar to it called Xanadu. Uh, and basically, that just makes everything more difficult or more expensive to, to bring up. Uh, so we can kind of see the difference between, down here we have the card count for that Parasite card. And on average, we got about 2.6 per deck. That's a lot. Uh, but the TF IDF scores are pretty low. So this is, a this is a card that's used so often that including it in a deck doesn't really tell us anything new or unique about that deck. It's like, all right, this is a deck, this is a card you've you almost always just throw in without a, without a thought. Uh, but if we do that for that second card, that Xanadu card, um, yeah, the average card, you know, on average it shows up uh, 0.02 in a deck, so on average it basically never shows up. Uh, but when it does show up, boy howdy, does that kind of higher numbers here tell us it's a little bit more unique? Boy, yeah, that's, that's pretty unique. Um, and basically we can kind of see, so here I've sorted that data frame by that Xanadu card. So where it does show up, it is telling us that it's very, very unique within those decks compared to other decks. Uh, the Parasite one, it, not so much. Um, so we're gonna apply this to k-means clustering. Uh, this is basically saying like, okay, give me all these, we've got all these cards, we've got all this card data, 
I want to find some clusters that exist between them. Uh, I'm going to tell it to give me six clusters, and I'm going to instantiate that k-means class, and then I'm just going to fit that data that we transformed and send it in. So even my little laptop is pretty fast with this because it's only 1,200 decks or so. Uh, and we can find out what the labels look like. And we get back an array, zero through uh, five. Uh, we can find out how long that is. So yeah, 1,249 decks in both cases. We'll join that back onto that data. And there, we've got a nice little group category over on the side here. So a lot of them are zeros. There's a, there's a five for that deck, four or five. Uh, and we can actually find out how often these show up. Uh, there's, looks like there's two really big clusters, zero and three, both have 300. Four, two, five, and one both have uh, a little over 100. But I don't know, that's kind of boring. Like I, I, can't, I can't see that. I would like to see what this data looks like. So let's actually visualize it. Um, so there's 275 different unique cards in this data set. Um, I don't know about you, I can't visualize 275 columns in a graph. Like that's just impossible. And in fact, you know, how, how do I graph all of these columns? <laughs> so we're gonna use something called a TSNE. TSNE stands for a T Neighbor Stochastic Embedding. Uh, it's this kind of really cool uh, algorithm. And basically what it does is it's designed to take a bunch of like multidimensional stuff and compress it down into one or two columns so you can actually graph it. Uh, it's also in SkyKit-Learn. It's awesome, you should really use it. Uh, if you are throwing millions of rows of data at it, it tends not to like that, but for 1200, this is fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna tell it to put in two different components, uh, and I'm just gonna have it take this data that we created up here and just throw that into there. And what's really cool with TSNE is that it's gonna, the, dif the differences it has between uh, points is actually related to how similar or dissimilar those points are. So it's actually not just combined, uh, not just doing like PCA on something, it actually is kind of giving you a, a meaningful distance between points, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of create that data. Um, I've taken that transform data that it spit out and given it just X column and a Y column, uh, and we will plot it. Um, so for a simple scatter plot, pandas data frame, pandas like library, their plot functionality, it, it works great. So we can actually just plot that, and yeah. So that is 1,200 decks, this comes from like one identity, clustered out by what cards they have, and particularly by how unique those cards are. And yeah, it looks like we do have some clusters of different kind of cards, you know, there's a, there's a little distinct one there, here's some big ones. Uh, but you know, I would really like to see what that looks like with the groupings that we've assigned them, right? We just did all that work with k-means clusters, let's see what it looks like. Uh, so we can kind of go ahead and join back on that group column. Uh, so now we have a deck, what its x and y coordinates are, and where it is. Uh, so pandas doesn't do plotting by group for a scatter plot very well. In fact, it doesn't do it. So we're going to have to drop back into matplotlib. Uh, and here I'm just kind of creating this dictionary of unique group values and adding some colors to them. And for every group in that, in there, I'm kind of basically saying, okay, here's the, uh, there we go. Uh, you know, here's the X and the Y for it, limit it just to that group, uh, add, add a label to it, give it this color, take off the axis, uh, and we kind of get something that looks like this. And what do you know? Like, clustering kind of works. This, this blue cluster looks like a cluster. That orange one looks like a cluster. Uh, it's just, there's a purple one that's kind of distinct down there. And we can even kind of go through, and this will kind of tell us, like, by cluster, what the most kind of like averagely seen card is. So this is like if the average card number is you know over two. And yeah, so these clusters actually have different cards that show up more and more often. Uh, some of these show up all the time. This deja vu card is kind of all over the place. But other of these are very unique. They don't show up as often. So that might actually tell us there is something here to these clusters. But you know, I don't know about you. Um, maybe this whole thing right here in the middle should be one cluster. Maybe we should have eight clusters. This is really easy. We can just go back all the way back up here and we could just go through and switch this out to 10 clusters, or eight, which is what I'm going to do. And I'll spare you all the work that come down there, but we'll just do, 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 do. That's gonna take a second to catch up. Right now TSNE is going through and finding new stuff for me. Uh, yeah, so here we've added two more clusters and I can just kind of iterate through that. I can say, you know, maybe 
maybe five clusters is better, maybe four clusters is better. This is great because it kind of helps me iterate through this. Um, you can also, if you want to, use uh, D3 with this. Uh, I didn't do this too much. I actually find it more useful to just have it dump into a JSON and hack on it uh, outside of the NiPython notebook. I think this goes to, the, uh, to Brian's point about know what your tools are for. Uh, but there's a library. NVD3 is the one that I find is the best. Uh, and basically, it still has some problems, but you can kind of tell it, OK, give me, give me this graph, uh, instantiate it as a, as a scatter chart. Uh, here's the dimensions I want it to be. Uh, and then go ahead and send that data into it. And yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but you can kind of see it's the same data. Um, it might be good for you. It might be good to like kind of iterate over that a little bit. Uh, I find it easier just to dump the JSON out of Jupyter and work on it outside of that. But hey, maybe that's a sprint option. Maybe that's something we can hack on. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of how I went through and and did that work. Um, it's iterative. It jumps into IPython notebooks. It jumps out of IPython notebooks. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of about where I'm at. Um, so anyway, I think that's just about 15 minutes. Thanks for your attention. Uh, feel free to hit me on my GitHub, yell at me about the website, uh, come talk to me about geeky card games if you play them. If you don't, let me talk to you about them. <laughs> Thanks.